Hi, this is Rahul and welcome to Sportingly Positive. In this episode, we will bring you a story that truly represents the idea of the Olympic Games. This story is about Eric Mutsumbani, also known as Eric the Eel of Equatorial Guinea, a country in Central Africa. This story is actually one of my personal favorites. But before I talk about this incredible story, don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our channel, Time Out Talkies, where we bring in the great stories from the world of sports, highlighting the values and positivity learned from the sports pitch in our series of Sportingly Positive. So before I start the story, let me tell you a brief about the wild card in the Olympic Games. So in the Olympic Games, countries that fail to produce athletes who meet the qualification standard are granted wild cards, which allow them to enter the competition without actually meeting the regular Olympic qualification standards. This is to encourage the participation of developing countries lacking full training facilities. Eric Mutsumbani was just 22 years old when he gained entry to the Sydney Olympic Games in 2000 via a wild card. Eric found his passion for swimming shortly after high school. At that time, he did not know how to swim, but he knew that it was a sport he wanted to pursue. In fact, he had never seen a swimming pool before until he found a 13-meter hotel swimming pool that he only had access for three hours a week. On the days he could not use the pool, he trained in the rivers and the sea with the local fishermen guiding him on how to use his legs and arms to stay afloat. After about eight months of swimming, he gained entry into 2000 Sydney Summer Olympic Games. For the first time, he traveled outside his country on the way to the Olympic Games in Sydney. It took about uh, three days with several layovers for Eric to reach Sydney, Australia from his country. It was in Sydney at the Sydney International Aquatic Centre he saw an Olympic size or an international standard swimming pool for the first time. So just imagine yourself, you are going to compete in the biggest stage of sports and you are seeing the 50 meter swimming pool for the first time at the games. Definitely not an easy environment to be in at all. To make things worse, in the run-up for the Olympics, Eric had been mistakenly informed that he would be swimming only 50 meters and he had trained accordingly. On his arrival at the games, he discovered the discipline in which he was entered was twice the, that distance. It was 100 meters, a distance that he had never attempted in life. Well, in the days leading up to the race, Eric trained simultaneously with the American swimming team. He used to sit and watch the US swimmers and try to learn their techniques. He also went around to the swimmers and coaches for advice. Some helped him, some did not. A South African coach who first double-checked if Eric was really an athlete at the Olympics he helped Eric by not only teaching him some techniques, but gave him a proper swim brief and goggles. I could not find the name of the coach, but if you happen to know the name of the South African coach, please mention it in the comment section. The coach practiced the values of Olympic Games in a very true sense. He respected Eric, taught him as a friend, and helped him to excel to be a better swimmer. Now on the D-Day, September 19, 2000, Eric came out for the heats of 100 meters men's freestyle with Nigeria's Karen Bale and Tajikistan Farukod Oripov. His fellow competitors were disqualified for making a false start. So he had to complete the heats all alone. Once the heat started, 
He completed the first 50 meters with all his energy. Then he struggled to complete the next 50 meters. His legs became stiff. He gave an impression that he was going nowhere. But still he was determined to touch the finish line and he never gave up. More than 17,000 people in the crowd present that day cheered Eric and encouraged him to finish the race. His lungs were burning with pain, but he fought through it, touched the wall and clocked 1 minute 52.72 seconds. Well, on timings, he finished last. The timings, in fact, this timing was also the slowest timing by anybody in the history of Olympic Games. You must be wondering why I am talking about the slowest swimmer in the Olympic Games and his race. But this is actually a story of excellence, courage and determination. This is a story of not a man finishing last. It is a story of not giving up and giving the best he could, fighting it out with all he had. It must have been the slowest timing in the games, but it was Eric's personal best. As Baron Kubota, the father of modern Olympics, pointed out, The most important thing in the Olympic Games is not winning but taking part. The essential thing in life is not conquering but fighting well. A lot of people would have given up, but Eric motivated himself. Not always winning is being the best but sometimes being the best you can. This holds in every sphere of life. You need to fight it out yourself and better yourself every day. The story of Eric Mutsambani did not end in Sydney. By 2004, Eric had halved his personal best time to 56.9 seconds. By 2006, he swam it in 52.18 seconds. That is his best time ever. We hope you like the story of Eric Mutsambani. Write to us if this story inspires you. If you happen to have a story which talks about the values and positivity of sports, please send it to us at timeouttalkies at gmail.com and we will story tell it on your behalf. Keep following Sportingly Positive at Time Out Talkies. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon and stay updated. Till then, see you in the next story.